Are how, responsible. Can, how can any self-respecting gay person support who cares what about the money yeah. look what they're doing to everybody yeah. look what they're doing they're taking everyone's rights away they're going to take our rights away but if and you yet, watch oh, fox news or money? listen to joe rogan you don't get that information so you don't vote well guess what you don't get to complain i don't get to complain about politics but i get to complain about other things right sure whatever Hey, welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, all about the things that are important to those of us who are gay and over 50. Hey, I'm Tom Burke. And hey, I'm Michael Foley. And hey, today we are going to talk about something that is weighing all of us here in the United States. We have a huge election coming up, and it is overwhelming, and it's scary, and it... I don't... Mind numbing? <laughs> Let's go with mind numbing. It is mind numbing. It really but, is. You know, we've got to we've got to bring it out to the forefront. We've got to talk about it. We've got to figure out how we're going to make it through this next election. Well, here's my suggestion. A little bit of alcohol, maybe some prayer if that is your thing, and a whole lot of participation. Mandatory. Before we get started, as passionate as Tom and I are about this show... We actually really wouldn't be here without your support. So if you guys don't know what Patreon is, hop over there. There's a link in our bio and in the comment section. Um, you can join us. Um, we have memberships that range from free to whatever works for you, a dollar a month, whatever, whatever makes you happy. But we can't exist without your support. So hop on over to Patreon, check us out. We have a whole bunch of additional content over there, like our Savage Side Eye our happy gay moment. We do questions and answers from you guys. So um, check it out and uh, help support us and help us keep going with these uh, shows that we do because we love it. And, you know, hopefully you do too. So pop over to Patreon and check us out. Thanks. All right. So now let's get into this. We, as I said, have this humongous election coming up here in the States and it is weighing on all of us. We every once in a while get these glimmers of hope and then they get dashed and then it gets more and more muddled and more confused. But before we can actually talk about the election itself, I think there are a few things and you're going to have to help me out, Michael, because Absolutely. you are far more into politics than I have ever been. Um, there are some basics that I think we all just need to understand. And one of them, which people all the talking heads keep talking about is the electoral college and how that is going to affect, you know, what the outcome. And first of all, what is it? How does it work? So the electoral college was established way back um, during the slavery era, and it does have its root in slavery, believe it or not. Um, and it, it, it abided by the three quarter rule. And this is so just vile and disgusting, which is why it should be abolished, that the southern states were complaining that they weren't getting the voice that they deserved, even though their populations were higher. And their populations were higher because of slavery. So there was a compromise that came into being, and that's for this it just makes me sick to talk about this, that for every five slaves, it would count as three quarters of a human being. So it seemed to give them an even voice, I guess you would say. Um, but today it um, unfortunately really de is deflating to a lot of people who believe their vote doesn't matter. Because, right. you know, in certain states, and this is going to happen in this election again, in a, cer a certain number of swing states, a very small handful of votes will decide this election. Okay, yeah, it started back then. We're still doing it now. I don't quite get it. I I don't know if all of us at this age uh, and older, if you grew up in the United States, you know Schoolhouse Rock. Do you remember Schoolhouse Rock? Oh, yes. Amolia Bill sitting on Capitol Hill. There you go, right? Oh, my like, favorite. <laughs> conjunction, junction. Way back Trump, then, I'll yeah. tell you that for me, politics. I'm only in a bill. That's the one that I remember. Cool. Um, yeah. I mean, we all remember those. And yeah. if you don't remember those, it was during the 70s. Uh, there were these little cartoon clips, maybe like a minute to two minutes, all this kind of funky, cool 70s music, singing, 
teaching us things about math, spelling, politics, whatever. And if you're feeling nostalgic, they're all on YouTube. So you could check them out. If, and even if you don't know what we're talking about, check them out because they're awesome. Right. So, I mean, we learned a lot of stuff back then. I don't know if we've retained it. I, I also took civics classes and political science in college, and none of this has retained. I do understand that for every congressperson we have, you get a vote. You get two more votes for every state because of your senators. But that also boils it down to that the people in the smaller states, their votes count more than say us in California, because we have so many people here. It just doesn't seem fair to me. Well, it, like you're right. It, it is based on the number of representatives from each state, and then each state right. gets an additional two two senators. So that that total becomes the amount of electors that each state has. Right. Uh, and it is uniquely, I mean, you know, we claim to be a democracy, and if we were a true democracy, it would be one vote, one person, and that's it. Right. And um, the legislature, when that now these days, back in the day, um, the electors could vote for whoever they wanted. So that has changed in the early 1900s. They changed that, so the electors have to follow the vote, the popular vote. But again, just as you know, in 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 a number of red districts, they could throw a, a state off um, completely, where you have cities that have a higher concentration of democratic votes usually um the rural areas get the same boat so it's it becomes sketchy and just the water is muddy and i think that's why a lot of people these days just feel their vote doesn't matter well i think that's it that's part of it yeah. right and the other part of it you mentioned already is this swing state thing which now we're looking at what three or four states and they're the ones who are going to you know whatever the outcome yeah. is it's going to be because of them and so the rest of us are sitting around going like, well, then what the F? Like, why why yeah. should we even vote? Well, because if all of us in the blue states that's, you know, we sit back and don't bother to vote, it's very, it would be very easy. Because this happened in New York, the congressional races, where Democrats just didn't show up. Right. And that's how we wound up with, what's his name? Um, the drag queen. Yeah. His name is and eluding me right George, now, which is a really George good thing. Santos. Um, you know, that's how we wound up with him because Democrats stayed home. And right. it shows you how quickly that happened in 2020 when Democrats thought Hillary has this, you know, it's a, it's, it's a done deal and stayed home. That's when we ourselves. Um, so getting out to vote is hugely important, even with the Electoral College, because seriously, 10 votes can swing a district from red to blue. So, okay. Your vote matters. It sadly not one vote, you know, one voice, one vote. Um, but it does matter hugely. But, and again, that that's why it, everything is so muddled. Everything is so overwhelming and doesn't make sense. And why haven't we changed this already? Well, you know? because to change a constitutional amendment, it takes three quarters of the House and three quarters of the Senate to get it passed. And Republicans know that, you know, starting in the late 90s, uh, when the demographic of this country started to change, they know they'll never win the popular vote again. It's, it's, they just won't, just because of right. the, way, the, the way that this country is made up now. Um, and in another 10 years, it'll be majority minority. Um, and that includes our community as well. We have to keep that in mind. Um, and we are all races, creeds, and colors. So it's, it, it's good to realize the power of our LGBTQI vote. Um, it's hugely important, especially for our generation, because, you know, Boomers still make up a huge amount of the people in this country. Right. I, I just, I'm just confused by this whole thing. I also, I think we need to talk about this humongous divide between the red and the blue people. You know, it, it seems to have gotten really out of hand. I grew up in a household where um, my mother was very Republican and my father was very Democrat, uh, Democratic and um you know, they, every, every, um, election there was like, but it wasn't it was, like, it, it was good conversation. You know, you got yeah. to present facts, which actually do matter. There is no such thing as alternative facts. There are facts and right. then there are lies. It's just the way it is. Um, thank you, Kellyanne Conway for that wonderful phrase that you introduced into our zeitgeist. Um, 
And we used to be able to have conversations with people who were on the other side of the aisle, civil ones. And I, I think with the onset of, um, you know, public radio, people like Rush Limbaugh, who their sole purpose was to create a divide. Right. And that has just echoed and rippled throughout our population for decades now. And it's, it's, it's either me or it's you. There is no right. us anymore. And that really sucks. I mean, I don't know about you, but anytime I see somebody wearing one of those red hats, or if I see anybody who has a Trump anything near them, I immediately despise that person and think, well, <laughs> there's a really uneducated idiot who, you know, and that's not a good thing. That's no, not a it's not. Very, no, yeah. but I, I, I want to I challenge you the next time you see that red hat, if yeah. it's in an environment where you feel comfortable, just ask the person why. Um, cause a lot of times they, th their news comes from one source. Right. And I had this, I believe it or not, went out on a date with somebody who I didn't know was leaning right and who was a Trump supporter along with his family. And I always talk about politics. It's usually where I go. Um, and he was like, Oh, I have something to tell you. And I was like, he, I, I knew it was coming. And he was like, so, and I just, I did, I asked him why. And we wound up having this amazing conversation and I introduced facts to him that he did not know because there's this talking point that the right has perpetuated for decades now that Republicans are fiscally responsible and they're not. Right. If you look back from the days of Reagan, who took our deficit to record heights, and then W. Sr. came in, even took it higher, and then who comes in? Bill Clinton for eight years, completely eliminates the deficit, has a balanced budget, and leaves Jr. a surplus. And what does, what does Jr. do? Spends like a drunken sailor, surplus is blown, and we have another massive deficit. And then Obama comes in, and what does he do? He brings down the deficit. He cuts the deficit that Bush established in half. So to say that Republicans are fiscally responsible is an argument you just can't have anymore. Got it. But I want to talk about this date you were on because that's more important to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, you didn't change this guy's mind, did you? Yes. He oh, actually asked on. me. I, you I know what? Believe me. I'm telling you because I presented him with facts like that because his, his first argument was, well, Republicans are fiscally responsible. And I told him just what I told you. Yeah. And he was like, can you send me something? Took out my phone, Googled, and I went, boop, here you go. And then he asked me to, we had, we had more conversations about other issues. And he asked me to send me info about that. And I said, just for an hour a day, check out a, another news source. Doesn't have to be MSNBC, which, you know, leans left. It could be a middle of the road BBC or, um, you know, PBS which are very fair and balanced. I said, check them out just for an hour a day so you get some more information about what it is you're talking about. But I, I still, okay, but how can this guy, how old was he about? He was on the younger side. He was like 35. Okay, well, fine. But <laughs> um, how can you be 35 years old and not know what Trump is all about and still want to support him? Well, uh, and again, I'm going to go back. He gets his, he lives in a vacuum. It's Fox News. It's right-wing media. And he was raised that way. His family is that way. So that is what he knows. That is, that is his go-to. His go-to is Fox News because that's what he grew up with. Okay. How educated is this guy? Oh my God. He's incredibly smart. He's a business owner. He's an entrepreneur. He is financially independent. He's smart. I, and again, I just, he looked at it from a financial, which a lot of lo log cabin Republicans do. They use this argument. Republicans are fiscally how can, responsible. How can any self-respecting gay person support? Who cares what about the money? Yeah. Look what they're doing to everybody. Yeah. Look what they're doing. They're taking everyone's rights away. They're going to take our rights away. But if and you yet, watch oh, Fox News or money? listen to Joe Rogan, you don't get that information. And that's why I said to him, you live in a vacuum, open up your mind for one hour a day. Just what you may not, if your mind doesn't change, fine. 
but allow for the possibility that what you're hearing isn't the only story. And I'm but, telling you what, he texts me all the time now. Can you send me something that I could send my parents? And I do. Great. And that's how, that's why I said, see, if if I had just shut down, and because I am right there with you, Tom, the anger that I experience because I do consume a vast amount of news and politics um, is infuriating to me because you're like, how can any rational person support this misogynist bigot? One, just, of, the, one of the worst people to ever walk on this fucking planet. Okay, so did you even ask him questions like, have you heard the man speak and you're okay with him making fun of other people? And he's like, yeah. No, because again, you're not going to see that on Fox News. You do see that. You hear what they're saying. I'll, I'm watching I'll, Fox because yeah. I want to see what they're saying. Yeah. And what they say is they slam Kamala, they slam... Uh, no, but you hear them, you hear Trump talking about everybody, calling them names and stuff. But they look at that as he's tough. You know, uh, uh, he's doing that rally again in Pennsylvania where he got shot. Yeah. And they were talking to a woman who has a tchotchke tent there and is selling t-shirts and hats and all this crap. And one of the t-shirts showed Trump with his fist in the air and it reads, Trump bulletproof. Because they believe, they do believe, because again, this is what Fox News feeds to them, he's fighting for you. They believe that. They believe he's rocking the system, that he wants to change it and make things better for middle America. And the sad part is, if you don't hear anything else, you believe it. If you repeat a lie enough times, it does become the truth. And that's what Fox News does. And if you remember, they got their ass sued off for the lies they told about the 2020 election and the voting machines. Yeah, so what a billion dollars they lost. I got it. So then how does your friend justify that? He never that never made it to you think Fox News is gonna go on the news and report we just lost a billion dollars because we lied during the twenty twenty elections and said these machines weren't but nobody thirty five years old is walking around with blinders on only looking at Fox. There are other things that are happening. I got news for you. People in their fifties are doing that. People in their sixties are doing that. Are we talking about gay people or straight people? I'm talking. If a gay person is doing that, shame on you. Well, you know, I don't want to shame people because that helps continue this chasm that we have from both sides. There used to be a time where we could have a conversation with each other. I and get that, Michael. I, but Tom, it doesn't make me any less sick. No, but the whole thing. Remember uh, Michelle Obama? Like when they go low, we go higher. We kept going higher, they kept going lower, and they yeah. were winning and winning. Because so, Democrats made a mistake for many, many, many years. Obama did this in his first term, where he believed if he played fair, Republicans would play along. And right. what did Mitch McConnell say the day that Obama was elected? I'm going to make him a one-term president. Right. Nothing else mattered to him. Not the American people, not passing legislation, nothing. It was about getting rid of Obama because they knew how dangerous he was because he spoke to middle America. And that's their game. But again, if that is your only news source, and that's why, because I'm sure we have conservative members of our community who listen to us. I'm just urging you just for an hour a day, tune into something different so you hear a different voice and then do your homework. You know, we've gotten lazy as Americans. We don't do our homework anymore. We'll hear something, and because we hear it, we go, oh, that must be true. Me, I hear something, I Google 15 different things and look at 15 different sources to go, because there's yeah. such a thing as clickbait, you know? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Anytime my husband is like, oh, did you hear this? I'm like, where'd you hear that? And <laughs> exactly. you better check it out first before you pass it along to anybody else. Even because... we're guilty of that. Even our side is guilty of that. We hear oh, something I know. from a source that we believe right. or that we feel is trusted and we automatically knee jerk reaction. Oh, I got to share this. Oh, I have to tell this story. And then you find out that, oh, wait, because that's not even close to what the actual story is. It's a great piece of clickbait. But what's underneath is, oh, really? That's what this is? You know, it's a big nothing burger. Right. So we both sides are guilty of that tunnel vision. 
Right. And what I hope, and that's what gives me hope about Kamala, is she is she's built this coalition. Who would have ever thought in their lifetime that? And I'm saying like people like me who are political wonks and live and breathe it that we would have AOC, Liz Cheney, and Dick Cheney, and Bernie Sanders out on the road for Kamala Harris. Right. People who were in Trump's cabinet, 95% of them are speaking out against him saying how dangerous he is for this country. But if you're saying that that they're not playing that stuff on Fox, then how is anyone going to know this stuff? And that's why I'm saying, so we all have the responsibility because we all know people in our lives who lean right. And it's instead of building a fence or a wall and blocking them out, have a conversation. And that's why this goes back to the red hat you said you saw and you just get infuriated. Yeah. Have a conversation instead. Just to say, so why are you supporting Trump? Like, what is it? What is it about him that and then start a dialogue like I did with this guy at dinner. And I'm telling you, yes, Tom, I did change his mind on a lot of issues. I don't know what he's going to vote. Not, I wouldn't ask him that question. But again, somebody who constantly texts me and says to me, can you send me something that I could send to my parents about this? Is somebody whose mind opened up a little bit. And that's a huge thing. Okay. I mean, great. But Talking to a guy that you uh, at a, at an, on a date is completely different than talking to a guy in a red hat. I'd be afraid that a shotgun would come out and he'd shoot me. Well, that's, I why I, that's why I started the, in an environment where you feel safe. You wouldn't do yeah. that at a Trump rally, obviously, or, right? Or anywhere, or, you know. But if you're if you're someplace out to you know and you see somebody, just ask why, how, how, what. Say I'm this, this is how you approach it. You know, what? I'm an undecided voter. Can you tell me why you're supporting Trump? hear what they have to say, and then give them an, an opposing viewpoint. I'm not talk, I'm not going to go talk to anyone in a red hat. Okay. I must not go right. to, right? I'll, I'll do it for both of us. W- good. So what yeah. are the other things that maybe people in our community could be doing? Because we are all scared. We're not. I mean, the other thing that I really don't understand is polls. You know, like this poll says she's going to win this yeah. state. This poll says she's going to lose that state. You know, it's that's all bull. And it's all kind of muddling everything. So we're up against these wonky polls. We're up against the Electoral College. We're up against these swing states. So what can guys like us, over 50 guys in this gay community, what can we be doing besides talking to guys in red hats? So I spoke to a friend of mine in New Jersey last weekend, um, and he's from a very red area. That's where we both grew up. It's very conservative and it's part of Trump territory in in New Jersey. And um, he has people in his neighborhood who put up Trump signs. And he called the DNC and he said, I want a Kamala and Walls sign, put it up in his yard and is having conversations with people. He also, he said, you'd be really proud of me. I called people in Pennsylvania last weekend all day. I was making phone calls. And that's what we can do. Okay. Random phone calls? Say again? Like just random? I'm calling, I'm going to make up numbers? When you, no. (laughs) If you volunteer for an organization and every state has their own version of the DNC, but then there's the national DNC. And those would be the folks you would reach out to and say, I want a phone bank. I want to send postcards. Because he also sent postcards, handwritten postcards. I I get that. Handwritten with personal messages. So that's what we can do. And then they get sent to people in Wisconsin. They get sent to people in Michigan. So there is stuff we could do where if if somebody receives a postcard in the mail, that is a personal message that you can see is handwritten that says, I encourage you to vote for Kamala with a brief message on why or check this website out. It does have an impact with an undecided voter. You know, we, we the, on both sides of it, you have people who will not change their mind. That's right. That's, okay. That's a good okay. Just want to clarify this. So we're not making random calls, but call banking, is that what you called it? Is oh, a very phone banking. Phone banking. Phone banking yeah. Uh and sending these postcards. Great. And what we do is we find our local DNC area and call them and say, How can we help? How can we phone bank or how can we do, you know? Trust me when I tell you, 
they will put you to work immediately. No, that's great. I, I want to know how can I'm, we're telling all these people out there listening yeah. to us, you know, how they can help because we are all feeling just so anxious and we do want to do something. So this you is could also, help. you know, you, you again, contact your local office for the Democratic National Committee and you could go out, stand outside or else and register people to vote. Right. But that so, doesn't take a lot. And when you're doing that, you're not revealing which side you're on. You're just getting people involved. Right. You're not saying I'm a Democrat. I want you to register to vote, yeah. vote for a Democrat. You're just saying, are you registered to vote? Because I've done this. Are you registered to vote? No, no. Right. Here's here, would you like to be? And, cool. and it is that easy. Okay. Uh, I do want to jump back to something you said about your friend in Jersey who put out signs. Um, I volunteer at the food bank, and one of the guys I, I volunteer with is head of the local city uh, DNC. And um, we were all talking about that. And he was saying that so many people are fearful of putting out signs because of the crazy right. Trump people and what they're going to do to their homes. And now they're going to know where I live. And so they're afraid of doing that. And no one wants to put anything. This is what he's saying to us. No one wants to put anything on their car because they're going to come out and have slashed tires or, you know, be keyed cars, which is what's happening out there. And well, you know, that, that has been a part of politics around the world since politics began is intimidation and fear. And that's what Trump does. He rallies yep. his base to be violent, to be aggressive. And you know what? W what happens when you don't stand up to a bully? The bullying gets worse. And it, he doesn't go away until, and not everybody is built for this. I understand that. You know, for me, again, it's one of those things that's in my DNA is I have been fighting since the eighties. It is in me. It is who I am. And I get there are people who aren't that. And if that is you, there are other things you can do. But like he took, and trust me when I tell you, this is not a person who is like me. Um, he he usually sits back and lets other people do the job, but the fact that because he, he did say to me, "You're going to be proud of me," and the fact that he took that stand to put that yard sign in his yard and took the risk of, you know what, if somebody eggs my house, fine. If I come out in the morning and my tires are slashed, fine. But you're not silencing me. Do you remember in the '80s the battle cry of "Act Up"? Yeah, silence equals death. And that still holds true today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a bumper sticker on your car? I do. Right in my back okay. window. Oh my just, God. Yeah. Just asking. Yeah. <laughs> Chill out, babe. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, everywhere, again, everywhere I go, I talk about politics. I can't not. Like, who talks politics on a first date? I do. Nobody else does. Um, but because it's it's a passion of mine. Okay. You no, know, and when people are like, "What do you? What do you?" So tell me about yourself. I'm like, "Well, this right. is me." You know. So, and but, but okay. So yeah, you're different, and your friend's different. But as this guy who is, runs the DNC area, area for for or office for this area is saying that so many people are too fearful of that. And, and again, I get that. I get right. it. Completely. No, you can't. Like, yes, you're saying like stand up to these bullies. I I said there are people who are built for that, like me. Yeah. And there are people who aren't. And I understand those people who aren't because my friend in Jersey right. was one of those people. But he changed yeah. his mind because he was like, this is a time to take a stance. But even if that's still not you, there are other things that you can do. Right. Right. Postcard. Which we just talked about. Right. The phone call. Phone banking yeah. and sending postcards is an easy thing, which is great. But in the back of so many people's minds is... Yeah, but it doesn't really matter. I live in California. It's going to be blue anyway. What does it matter that what I do? Well, I want to remind people, because again, I'm going to go back to the New York election when Democrats chose to stay home, and it completely swung the House of Representatives. They took over eight, I want to say it was eight, eight New York seats that were democratically held because Democrats didn't show up, so Republicans won. And if you think that can't happen in California, you're f nuts. Because so much of California is red. You know that. I know that. Everything you do. <laughs> I know, but calm down a little bit, okay? <laughs> well, Jack, Don't yell at it. me. All right. <laughs> Look, everything below Disneyland is red. 
everything above LA is red, um, except for little spots, maybe Santa Barbara. Then you go up to San Francisco, but all that's red. So if you well, think that California can't swing red, you're kidding yourself. If you sit on well, there are park. there are these pockets, and yes, they are going to have their red Republican, you know, people, but. That's something else. Like when you look at the the map of the United States and you see where the blue concentration is, it's in every major city. Well, it, it, it it's discouraging because you do see yeah. these little pockets of blue and then a whole lot of red. And it is overwhelming. But the yeah. choice here in this election is not sitting out. It's you it can't be because seriously, we know what he's going to do. If you're paying attention, you know what he's going to do if he's yeah. reelected. And if if you know what, if you want to sit back, again, if you don't vote, you don't get a voice and you don't get to complain. Because when we lose our democracy, when inflation is through the roof, at, you have you have, you really have nothing to complain about if you don't vote. You have to participate. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That you know, I, I that's kind of a thing in my whole life. Like you can't complain about anything unless you're gonna do something about yeah. it. Otherwise just shut up. Yeah. You right. know, so but this is such a big overwhelming thing and it just seems like there's nothing we little guys can do about it. But, you know, yes, we can phone bank, we can uh do postcards, we can call our DNC uh people and say, what can we do? You know, is there anything we can do? Um, you know, and just and remember a couple of seeds creates a forest. It does take time. Look at our journey from the eighties to now. Yes. As a community and the growth we have made. And it's because people were after the eighties, people were willing to come out and say, yes, see, and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize. If you are a community member and you are living out and proud that's a political statement. You're already doing it. So just to take another step and to continue to be involved in another way is huge. Because right. again, every one of us who lives our lives out is making a political statement. We are saying to the masses, this is who I am. You don't get the opportunity anymore to define me or tell me what I can or can't do. That's a political statement, right? We're doing right. it. The biggest thing that we all have to do is vote, as you keep saying, right? Not everybody's registered to vote, which is also mind blowing, yeah. right? Um, but but you know what? We live in a system where it, it, so much of our lives now is overwhelming financially, just the pressures of work, the pressures of daily life. Sometimes politics is a hard thing to look at, and so things fall through the cracks. But this is this is one of those years where it can't. You can't let it fall through the cracks because. This um, wonderful American experiment that we have failed miserably sometimes to live up to the ideals of who we're supposed to be is truly at stake this election. Is it too late to register? Um, it depends on your state. Some okay. states, actually, you could even register the day you vote. So what I really want people to do who maybe aren't registered or just need clarification or maybe aren't sure they're still registered, go to vote.org. You put in your state, you put in your information, they will check your voter registration to let you know if you're active on the rolls, because that's hugely important, because some states have changed laws, especially southern states, that if you're an act inactive for a period of time, boom, they purge you from the rolls, which is really shady, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So go to vote.org, check out your status, see if you're registered. If you're not, register. Um, and again, do it soon because depending on your state, the window's closing. Um, and again, there are some states where you could literally go the day of election, walk into a polling place, register to vote, vote, and your vote will be held until they verify your information, but your vote will count. Brilliant. And you'll also okay. get notifications from them on your elections, on propositions or th ballot measures that are on your specific ballot for your specific area, which is awesome. Um, so it, it keeps you informed of everything that's going on within your own community as well as across the nation. And do you know, because you just mentioned that about all of the other things, not just the big president election, there's a lot of other things, a lot of people, you know, and even things for like judges and propositions and things that 
people just don't understand. Is there somewhere that we as gay men over 50 can be kind of shown who we should be voting for? Yes. Um, yeah. And I, a friend of mine who is from Russia, this is his very first election that he's voting in, and he is so excited. Cool. Um, but he's really confused. He's like, you know, we're in California. There are so many ballot measures and propositions on our, yeah, our right. I think it's, it's overwhelming. Plus the judges. Um, and again, I don't, I mean, I know which way he leans, so that's not an issue. So I told him to contact the DNC and ask them for information on the candidates because they'll send it to you. They'll tell you who okay. they are. They'll tell okay. you where they came from. But I also will encourage people to do that for the RNC too. If you are an undecided voter, because we're not telling you what way to vote. We're just saying vote that you can do, you could contact both organizations and they'll send you information on the candidates. And yes, it takes, think of it like school. You know, we're back to schoolhouse rock. It's work. It is your responsibility as a citizen of this country yeah. to do a little bit of homework to know what you're voting for. And I want to encourage people to do that. And if it's too overwhelming for you and you just want to vote for president or your senator or your representative, that's okay too. Just do that. Leave the rest blank. It's fine. Okay, cool. I didn't know you could do that. That's yeah. great. Um, all right. All right. I'm a little exhausted by this whole talk. <laughs> and I think I need to either lay down in a corner rocking back and forth or um, just start pouring sugar down my throat. So um, before sugar. we end this- Go sugar. Go sugar. Let, yeah, probably. Uh, or both. Uh, let's, uh, let's just kind of summarize everything. Um, we have to vote. We have to vote. That is the- that's the, that is, the entire point of this conversation, vote. But if you're oh. not registered, you can't. Right. So make sure that you're registered first, then you got to vote. And then if you have the inclination, if you have some time, call your DNC, get on phone banking, sending out postcards, sending those messages to people who might be undecided. Uh, if you have the guts to stand up to people, stand up to people, and as Michael said, ask them questions. And it doesn't have to be confrontational. It, do it just doesn't. It just you know, always seems to turn confrontational. It doesn't have to be person-to-person -person contact if you're not comfortable with that. Okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm ready to go run around this town and, you know. Do it. Yell go do people. everything that you just said. But for the rest of you guys, before you get up and run around and do whatever you're going to do, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you hit like and subscribe. But then also leave us some comments. Where do you stand on all of this? Where do you feel? Like, are you a guy that can go out and talk to someone in a red hat? Are you someone who wants to help? Are you somebody who is just kind of, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to sit around and do nothing. You know, let us know. You could also reach out to us. Um through social media, across social media, at No Two Gays About It. Just remember, it's the number two, not the word. Um, so No Two Gays About It, and that's Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok. Um, so reach out to us. Send us uh, If you want to send us a private email, send it to no two gays about it at gmail.com, and let us know what you're thinking. That's right. And make sure that you get out and vote. We want to send a huge shout out to our supporters over at Patreon, who support us at the executive producer role, and that is Lauren Javier, John Bonasante, Jason Cruz, Kurt Bremer, and Ted Zalewski. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for believing in us, and we hope we're doing you proud. Yeah, thank you guys. We really, really appreciate all of your help, your support, and we really want to thank all of you guys out there who are watching and listening to us and who are commenting. We appreciate each and every one of those comments and we love reading them all right michael this has been a lot so until next time until next time tom uh, thank you guys for listening we'll see you next week